Welcome to Five Points Blues presentation of Back to the Basics. Everything you wanted to know about Cowboys football, but were too afraid to ask. Here are your hosts, Nikki Harrison and Christy Scales. Hello, welcome to Back to the Basics. Everything you wanted to know about Cowboys football, but were too afraid to ask. We want to thank Nate Newton for staying on, talking to us, staying with us. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah You're it's welcome. overtime for Nate. That's hang, right. Hanging with the girls. Hanging with the girls. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Yeah, yeah. Love it's it. It's a new show. Yeah. Well, I have to say, you're staying with us because Christy was yelling so loud last night that she lost her voice. <laughs> That's it. A little case of laryngitis, so... Thank you both for doing the heavy lifting today. But now one of the reasons why we wanted to have you on, Nate, uh, last night's game, you know, coming out of the bye, there had been so many changes with the offense and trading for Amari Cooper, but then also the changes with the offensive line in particular, mm -hmm. Mark Colombo taking over for Paul Alexander. Obviously, a change like that, it's a long-term thing and a work in progress. But did you see any difference last night with the offensive line? Coming out early, I think we blocked a little bit better. But uh, they had a guy named Jarrell Casey, number 99, yeah. and then a rack pole outside linebacker, and uh, DeJuan Jones, I think. But Jarrell Casey was the big issue. And I tried to tell the guys earlier on my show last week that that is, that is a key. Every time we've faced a offense a defense that has had great interior defensive linemen, we're going to struggle because we have a new center, which is he's playing okay, but our left guard, Connor Williams, is a work in progress, and sometimes they, yeah. they, they take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. It's lack of experience and strength. Mm -hmm. So uh, – Last night they did they opened the game up a little bit better and once they got a lead though and we had to kind of dictate what we were doing you know it, it kind of reared his ugly face again from the middle I think he, uh, Connor gave up two sacks I think Collins gave up one and the other two I'm gonna give to our quarterback where he where just he needed just, to get to yeah. rid of the ball a little quicker yes yes mm -hmm. uh, and how I, do you do that is that is that a skill that you just have to pick up is that practice a lot is of it's that... feeling i think okay yeah situational mm -hmm. football yep it's situation i'll give you an example uh you're in the middle of the game you know second quarter five minutes left uh you down in the red zone it's third down you if you get rid of the ball don't take a sack mm -hmm. you get to kick a field goal you don't get rid of the ball you get a sack you you know you out of field goal range. That's called situation football. You playing gotcha. to a certain situation, and that's why Dak before was good at. Now Dak is not so good at. It. A couple of times last night he just ran out of bounds. Mm -hmm. When he once you break the tackle box, you can throw the ball. Yeah, get rid of it. But he did two or three times. He just held on to the ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that 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 you know he's going a little bit backwards, and that's what's kind of disheartening because. They went out and got the receiver, right. you know, to try to give him confidence, try to give the uh, offense a boost and try be able to help the defense because all this intertwines. And uh, it's not – it's not. it didn't work last night. I mean, our defense gave us an opportunity the first six minutes of the game. We could, oh, yeah. Yes. It was ours. Yeah, mm -hmm. only seven points out of yeah. that – first uh, right. quarter with all of those takeaways because our defense has been so great all year until last night and mm -hmm. they were just awful on third downs and awful in the red zone. The one thing that you could point at the defense, and it's not just us saying this, <clears throat> it's Rod Marinelli, it's Jalen <clears throat> Smith, it's Sean Lee, it's all, all the guys on the line saying the one thing we need to do more of is take the ball away mm -hmm. and help set up our offense. And that's what the defense did last night early in the game, and the offense was not able to capitalize on it. Right. When it was when we went in halftime and it was tie ball game, I felt like we should have had more points. Oh, absolutely. Ain't Spe no feel specifically like in the first because the you know, we you the, red the zone Cowboys three got times. the ball first mm -hmm. and drive down and then Maher misses a a 38-yard field goal, which is a chip shot these days by NFL standards. And then um, Tennessee takes the ball over, and that's when Demarcus Lawrence forces the fumble. And mm -hmm. it's recovered by Sean Lee, and they get the uh, Amari Cooper's first touchdown catch as a, as a cowboy. But then, you know, the 
Titans get the ball again, and Jalen Smith recovers the fumble, and Cowboys aren't able to take advantage. That was the uh, Dak throw. You felt he forced it to Amari yeah, Cooper. Yeah, it's obvious. I yeah. mean, what what what's disheartening is, and I saw this happen with the Giants. Two years ago, the Giants had a, a poor a poor offensive line, but they won 12 games that year. But you can see that, okay, they had a great defense. Their defense helped them because their offense was just adequate. Then the next two years, this year and last year, they were just terrible. Well, this is what's scaring me because all through this season, this short season, I've been like, okay, offense, you're going to have to carry us. And if the defense ever started getting turnovers and you don't capitalize off those turnovers, a team will blow us out. And people would look at me and say, a team will blow you out because your defense, no matter how they what comes out of their mouth, they're not going to play the same. So where do you guys think the disconnect is? I mean, I feel like there's several puzzle pieces and they're all turned in the opposite well, direction. I think the disconnect is this is an the Cowboys are an average team. Okay. And you they are not good enough to overcome self inflicted wounds, such as penalties and turnovers. And so Dak, what he was so great at, particularly as a rookie, and even last year, not making indiscriminate throws. You know, he he takes care of the football. But this year, you know, he had the, the two turnovers last night. And I'm not putting it all on Dak because some of his interceptions earlier in the year bounced off of the wide receivers. Mm -hmm. They weren't necessarily bad throws. But um, – you know, the, the Cowboys, you mentioned uh, Connor Williams getting beat for a couple of sacks. He had another uh, holding penalty last night in one series. And I believe this was, I have my game notes from last night, <laughs> if you can read this chicken scratch. But uh, there in the, uh, the first offensive series for the Cowboys in the third quarter, there was a holding penalty on Connor Williams, a false start on right tackle. Lyle Collins, and then the fumble by Dak when he was sacked. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> And that was just on one series. Right. So the Cowboys just cannot afford to shoot themselves in the foot because they're not winning two out of three facets of the game, defense, offense, special teams, and they're just not able to overcome it. That I, maybe maybe Nate disagrees. No, with that th 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 this is what this is what killed the Cowboys last night. And uh, you got two minutes, uh, a little bit more than two minutes left in the first quarter. They get the ball, start driving. Is after we didn't score, I think we didn't score on, on the interception. That, right. Yeah, they, that's yeah. the interception. They, right. they get the ball, start driving. We about got them stopped, uh, and, and we get a penalty or something, and they they maintain. We go to a break, come back into the second quarter. They continue to drive, and when this thing was over, it was uh, 15 plays, 80 yards. Eight minutes and 55 seconds. That's a very long drive. Yeah. <laughs> no, nearly nine minutes. Yeah. They, that yeah. was, they punched us in the gut. And then when you look at the third downs, mm -hmm. that's, that's, a, that's a celebration for a team, a defensive team, when you have third and anything over four. You're like, okay, we can get these guys off the field. We had third and nines, third and eights, and these guys would stay on the field. Yes. Now, that, now, now you kicking me in the gut. And as the game go on, you may not see. Okay, well, hey, they, we were we were tied up at halftime, but you don't forget eight minutes and fifty five seconds, and all those third down. That's an accumulation of body punches. Mm -hmm. It shows up in the fourth quarter, wearing the defense down. Yes. Yeah. And it showed up. And and, wow. our, and our offense on the sideline because the, they never our answered. defense can't gotcha. get off. And so, uh, you know, uh, Zeke Elliott, how many touches did he have in the second half? Hardly any. Right. And, it's, and they had fallen behind, but also they weren't out there enough. I was shocked when I saw that I believe it was 56 <clears throat> plays, Nate. Yes. Because at one point – it, midway through the fourth quarter, I think we only had 44 plays. Yes. And so that's – you normally – the average is about 65 plays a game. And we're in the middle of the fourth quarter, and we barely have over 40. So um, it just shows how much Tennessee was a, able to control the ball. 
especially in the, the second half, and it's because our defense couldn't get off the field on third down. So that when you, you know, with statistics, when they talk about overall rankings of teams for offense and defense, they do it by like total yards. Uh, mm -hmm. But really the things to, to look at, turnover differential is the mm -hmm. number one determining That's factor it. in the NFL. Do you take the mm -hmm. ball away more than you give it away? Um, and then third down is another important thing because it's in terms of staying on the field and the the, the Cowboys lost badly in that, and they, they, that's what's disheartening because the defense had been very good at that and in the red zone going into last night's game. you got to understand that you, this is a combination you never want to happen. They ran more plays than us. Right. They were better at third down than us. And the most telling one was their, their red zone was much better than ours. We were in their red zone in the first half, maybe what three times, and we only come up with seven once. Exactly. Yes. So o over overall, yeah. we were in the red zone four times right. it, for the game and scored once. Once. That, yeah. You you can't give up three or nothing. You know when you're in that red zone, you you want three or more, but you can't have nothing. So, how is it that we played the way they played last night? I say we like I was out there. Um, and then Jacksonville, when we were able to score forty points, what's the what what's the difference? What what's happening? Matchups. Matchups. Okay. And, and 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 see a lot of things is mental, and I and I try to tell people if if if, if we can get Jacksonville defense on its best day, mm -hmm. it don't matter who they play, they'll shut them out. But and I'm coming from from a player's point of view. Okay. But when I look over and look at my quarterback, and we just stop the Cowboys, and we just next play, we hold them to three, then you go out there and throw an interception. Eventually, I'm going to walk over and say, man, you know what? If you look at the Jacksonville game and you watch our offense, when they got 17 points, Jalen Ramsey is their spiritual leader. Okay. Jalen Ramsey put his helmet on the bench, sat down, and threw his arms back and looked up at the big screen. Game, game over. Game over. Got the rest it. of the team just followed him. Okay. We didn't do that last night. We continued to play. But we, as the game went on, me and Broaddus was watching it, and we just said, man, tired. Mm -hmm. They just got wore out. Now, gotcha. and and is that from the third downs yes, and not getting off the field, or yes, was some of that coming out of a bye week? Seriously, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. because you you would think that a bye week you would be refreshed, right? Yeah. You would you know? think, uh huh. Mm -hmm. That was third downs. That I'm telling you, that's a that 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 down there. That that is the biggest down in the world from being a, from from celebrating, you know. Just think when it's third and one, mm -hmm. and you're on the goal line, it's third and goal, and you stop them. You see how people jump up in there like they don't want the nuts. Super Bowl? <laughs> you know, but yeah. in the same token, you go out in the middle of the field, it's third and nine, you should stop them. All of a sudden, you, and you up by six, and they complete that third and nine. Right. Yeah. And you just see the defense like, oh, well, my God. But, but yeah. that's why some of these calls or the, the timeout that was called right before – um, Daniel Ross got the sack, but particularly the Leighton Van Der yes. penalty. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Maybe Mari Mariota with Mar Marcus Mariota. <laughs> um, you know, I, I thought from field level, I thought it was a bogus call. I mean, I I understand yeah. that yes, he did make contact with the <coughs> helmet, but what else can Van Der Esch do mm -hmm. to pull up and not hit him? You right. know, I mean, right. it's football. So, but you know, they they get that penalty and move on First so down. there were just yeah ex exactly but hey one of the things you know the loss last night 28 to 14 it's in the rear view mirror there's nothing we can do to change it mm -hmm. in my column today for five points blue whenever we have a big loss like that uh, my title and the the way i do the article is csi arlington because yeah. you know crime scene <laughs> investigation we have the we have the dead body right the yes. loss and then you do the investigation and come up with the clues and try and figure out what happened but last night is in the past so nate what do you see moving forward with this team and let's start with um, amari cooper who 
again, scored a touchdown last night and led the team with five receptions. And we've got and, some tough opponents yeah, going yeah, forward. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, this is the meat of the schedule. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Chris, yeah. Ms. Nick, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, and to each individual player understand his value to the team, it's hard to say. I mean, you got a, a left guard. Uh, he he's a, he, he's in the middle of a battle. He ain't never thought in his life the NFL is bringing him something. He ain't never – the challenge of getting up every week knowing that the NFC East, our division, has those guys that is his worst enemy. That's great inside play. Oh, and guess Coming what? Guess him. what? Fletcher Cox is, is uh, I was going to – yeah. 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 Oh, my goodness. See, so, well, thanks, Nate. I'm feeling so much better now. So, but – he got his own individual <laughs> battle. You got a right tackle who last year you could not tell me that he was not going to be one of the top five or six right tackles in the game because he had progressed so much during the season. Yeah. Now for him to fall back to where he is now, where he's barely just a, a notch above our left guard, Lyle is struggling. Right. Do you think? Do you think it had to do with just uh, kind of changing up a lot of the stuff yes. in the off season? Yes, because it took him a while to become a right tackle. Because mm -hmm. he used yeah. to play guard, right? Yes. The so I remember that. now all of a sudden he learning how to use his right hand, uh, doing it that that way, mm -hmm. and then he switched. Doing it the Paul Alexander yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Come, okay. He sw okay, he learning how to do it Frank Pollock's way. Mm -hmm. Then had to learn how to do it this way, and he struggled. Badly. Gotcha. So now they, they're coming back to this. So it's a mind game. How much sacrifice are you willing to put in? You know, time is sacrifice because it's one thing to have a schedule practice. It's another thing to be out there after practice is over with or watching film when everybody's going home and critiquing yourself. How much are you willing to sacrifice? And so – you know, and then we got our left tackle, who's just this lip, he just, this just this much off of being himself. Mm -hmm. How much of that is age and injury, and how much of that is is a uh, 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 technique? So he just or, this, or yeah. communication, yeah. or you know, you don't have Witten next to you helping right. block when yeah. you've right. got these young guys. And, yeah, but see, and, he and, never, and, but he, see, he, he never, never really had to have yeah. that much help yeah. in the right. past. But I just mean, there's there's a yeah. whole lot of moving parts in well, this. Well, I even wonder if it's a little overcompensation because he knows that there's a lack. There's no Frederick and Connor Williams is out there. Like you mm. said, there's no Witten. So he might be trying a little harder, and that little harder is messing him up. Yeah, but th this is why they made the move with what they're doing. Everything is predicated off of how well our offensive line can play. Mm -hmm. But the number one issue is simply this right here. And just this is the bottom line. And, and teams that have elite quarterbacks can cover up all right. of them. Yeah. yeah, Tony Romo covered up a lot of <laughs> a lot of woes. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> so, he could spin out or yeah. just or get rid of the ball quickly or make a call. Right? He he yeah. understood. Yeah. When Tony became Tony, he understood situation of football. And I was telling my guys. Kurt and Shannon at the table, I said, y'all, I said, do y'all ever stop and realize how great Aaron Rodgers really is? Yeah, yeah. He's great. I said, no, do you really stop Yeah, with that offensive line, I said, all the injuries. Ugh. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Two weeks ago, he almost beat the Rams if a kid would have just stayed in the end zone. Yeah. He did this. He almost, he almost beat the New England Patriots. Yeah. Now, let me give y'all – do y'all know who they right guard was for them this past week? I, I, I know the answer. But you know? Yeah, I don't. It, it, Tell it, he used to play for the Cowboys. <laughs> Tell By, Byron Bell, who was our swing tackle oh, wow. last year, our backup uh, tackle. And so he uh, uh, left in free agency, and he ended up signing with the Packers. And he was not starting, but then got pressed into service uh, because they've had so many injuries along and the they, offensive and they, line. And they right tackle went out. Mm -hmm. Now, then, I have nothing against Mr. Bell, and I have nothing against their backup right tackle, but these guys can't play. Mm -hmm. They Listen, they can't play. And Aaron Rodgers 
kept them in that game. Wow. And I and I and, and see when you look at that and you be like so, simply because he would not take a sack, right. simply because he understood the situation of football, simply because he has the experience, mm-hmm. but he knew like I can't take the sack. So he let me ask you ball. this. Do you think Dak has that potential? I mean, this is only his third year. Do you think he has that potential to be that kind of quarterback, an elite quarterback? I, I think is he that has. a hard question? Pot- is it too no, soon to the, ask the that word, question? The word potential means that you don't have it yet. Correct, because he doesn't. So right? I think that Do we agree I think on that? That, that answers. That. Uh, I think, no, I mean, uh, you know, Jerry Jones was asked today on our flagship station, uh, 105.3 The Fan. He does did his weekly call-in show every uh, Tuesday morning, and he was asked about Dak, and he said that he's a young player and he's going to be extended. By that, he meant extending the contract. Mm-hmm. Now, what else is Jerry going to, to say? Of course he's going to back his guy. He's right. And he's that kind of owner anyway and glass half full and all that kind of stuff, and you sure don't want to bag on your quarterback with For sure. half a season to play. For but, sure. <laughs> but, um, um I mean, there, there are questions. Let's just put it this way. Everyone is under evaluation every single week in the NFL. To answer your question, mm-hmm. does it? this is what I believe. And for the last four games, he has went against his very nature because he's turning the ball over. Mm-hmm. That it, That – is what endeared him to fans. Mm-hmm. Right. Because his first yeah. year, he did not yeah. turn the ball over. Right. Correct. So mm-hmm. now, Dak, you used to play halfway decent situation of football. Go back to that. I don't care what you do. Uh, coach once told me, we brought you in the league because we saw your potential of this, but this is what got you here. Mm-hmm. You could catch the ball, son. This is what got you here. Now, we knew we may have to run, teach you routes, but we didn't think we had to teach you to catch the ball. Because Now, go back to your roots. Mm-hmm. Catch the ball. Dak didn't turn the ball over. Dak turning the ball over. Whether his fault or not, you're turning the ball over. Okay, if it's the receiver's fault, I think they went out and, and, and tried to fix that. Mm-hmm. Okay, if it's the offensive line fault, they're trying to fix that. But the one or two times that it's not these people's fault, you have to come clean. Mm-hmm. When you're running out of bounds, throw the ball away. Don't yeah. hold the ball. Now, I'm not saying you got to run. I'm not like most people, hey, run, run. But you know last night in the fourth quarter you held that ball too long and, and, and Collins gave up a sack because you held that ball yeah, too that, long. Yeah, that sometimes the sacks aren't the fault of the – yeah. Offensive line. You know. Yeah. And but, so, but, you know, Dak, gotcha. rec- Dak recognized, you know, he he's owned up to – he's up there at the podium 30 minutes after the game saying, yeah, I forced that ball to Amari Cooper. I shouldn't have thrown it. And so, I mean, he knows it's – and we have to remember he's still a relatively young player and, and, in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And, so. But see, Miss Christie, for the next eight games, mm-hmm. it got to be that way. Yep. Because – I'm going to tell you something. It's your job, and he cherishes his job. Mm-hmm. There's a few guys on this team that cherish their job, and I can call some that I think that don't. Right. But this guy cherishes his job. Like You know, our offensive line, they cherish their jobs. Mm-hmm. They, you know, but you but it comes a point where sometimes I just don't think they should bring players to the podium because especially, you know, quarterbacks have to do it, but I wish they wouldn't do that to Dak. Because uh, it's going to come a point where everything is going to fall on his shoulder. Right. It's going to come a point, I don't care what they say about the offensive coordinator, what they say about the head coach, eventually it's all going to fall onto his shoulders. Now, one thing we don't know from him as a young guy, will he work through this? Will he get through this? Or will the weight of this team take him under? Mm. That's the question I don't know. That's the question he has to answer because I've seen young quarterbacks but four years under where the weight of the team just – It's too much. It's too much. So, Ms. Chris, I mean, you, maybe you may have some ideas of where you feel about that situation. Well, I mean, he's got all the intangibles, all the character, high character yeah. qualities. He's a serious-minded guy. 
and uh, he's gone through a lot of adversity in his personal life. Yes, and, um, you know, for even though he does a lot of commercials and the yeah, like, he's yeah. not he's not what Parcells would call a celebrity quarterback, no. at least not in my opinion. Right, I don't think right. he is. And, I think but um, I, I think if there's anybody from a character standpoint and who they are as a person to handle these types of things, I think that it would be Dak. And so that's why, you know, I'm, I'm trying to remain optimistic about the rest of the season. And it's mm -hmm. hard right now, less than 24 hours after a, a crushing loss like that, when, right. you know, this was a game that, that was winnable for the Cowboys. Obviously they should have they beat the Bridges. They should, they should have. Yeah. They should have. The wow. Titans – yeah, it's it's very very disappointing, and so it's all doom and gloom and crime scene investigation. You know, the day the day after a loss. Where do you put this loss? To me, to me, I, I'm still sitting there saying, how did we lose this? Right. I feel yeah. like the ones that you're expected to win are the worst ones what, to lose. Yeah, and to me, what was disappointing, we knew that the offense was not going to be fixed in one fell swoop, one bye weekend, even with the change. Right. At, coach on offensive line and bringing in Cooper, even though they, you know, he just went right into the deep end. There was no toe dipping and in the shallow water and wading in. I mean, it was, he was out there and, you know, playing different spots and running lots of different routes. So uh, pleased with Cooper and what I saw with that. But the disappointing thing was the defense for the Cowboys, which, you know, this team could have five wins easily this season because the defense has played that well. You can maybe even argue six wins this season wow. because the defense has been playing so, so well. But they did not play as well last night it was mainly mainly the third downs mm -hmm. and then when they did get the takeaways the offense was not able to to capitalize on it and then our our special teams has been okay yeah but you know we haven't been winning field position battles as we have in, in the past so um I, I think that just all three facets you know there's only been i think jacksonville was really the only game where we won in all three uh facets this 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 is um this is an offensive league. Okay. And uh, uh defense is uh, I talked to some coordinators and I talked to people. Defense is now if you if you have six drives on me, six times three is what? Eighteen. Mm -hmm. But if I have five four drives on you, four times seven is what? Twenty eight. Eight. Yep. You can have it six times, or you can have it even seven times, and all I got to do is score a touchdown. Yeah, it's quality, not yeah. quantity. Yes. <laughs> and so, and the Patriots got a saying: you can come into our house and you can score threes all day, but you would never beat us. Mm -hmm. And that's their motto. And that's that's gonna become our motto: you can score all the threes you want, but if we can get us four times in the red zone with seven, nine times out of ten, we're gonna beat you. That's W. Well, we are out of time. Thank you, Nate. But yeah, before we, we go. Really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> before we go, I have to ask this one question. We're going to Philly on Sunday. What has to happen? They are the super great. Straighten super this out for crying out loud. What is going on? I agree with Brad. That's it. They yes. gotta straighten it out. No, I mean I think I'm not saying this is necessarily going to be Custer's last stand for the Cowboys, <laughs> but you can't come, you know, six, lo there's a lot six of losses noise. would be, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They need to quiet the noise, and mm -hmm. the way to do that, to cover all the blemishes, is to get a win. Get a win. How do we do yeah, that, Nate? We do that by being, and I hate to sound like Coach Gary, by being efficient. Yeah. Okay. And like she said, you can't beat yourself. No yeah. self-inflicted, no, uh, no turnovers. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, stupid no stupid penalties. Yeah. Right out of my mouth. <laughs> or controversial <laughs> penalties, yes. either way, you know. And, and, yeah. and every time you go into the red zone, you have to get seven. On the road, that is so paramount. Yes. Whenever yeah. you're in their, the opponent's red zone, seven. Don't settle seven. for a good seven. You, you got to go. And, you can't uh, even afford to lose the coin toss anymore. <laughs> that you're you right, Douglas. If you allow yeah. the other team to defer, <laughs> it's a huge problem to overcome yeah yeah mm. all right well we'll be back next tuesday thank you again nate thank you all for staying right. with us you got to come back and join us again <laughs> you <All right>. bet. <laughs> open invitation that's definitely we'll see you th next week thank you for watching on five points blue this has been a production of five points blue dallascowboys.com and the dallas cowboys football club How about this, cowboys? Yeah!